We have been doing Doppler ultrasound for over 13 years now, and what Doppler ultrasound does, it measures blood flow, the velocity of blood flow, plus a lot of other parameters of blood flow going past the probe that you apply to the foot. And what we've found is that depending on what the horse is standing on, the, the velocity of blood flow, but also the perfusion of the foot, meaning when more blood vessels start to open up, increase perfusion, changes with the surface that the horse is standing on. When they're on a harder surface, the same amount of blood is going to the foot, but it's staying in the larger vessels. It's not going out into the smaller channels as much. And then if you put them on a more conformable surface, something that is very comfortable, more of these smaller channels start to open, and so you get greater blood flow through the entire uh, dermis of the foot, but also the internal parts of the foot itself. Now, with the washcloth, what we found is that if we take a horse and have it stand on a cement walkway and lift the opposite leg up and record blood flow through the, the weight, through the foot that's on the ground, we can uh, get a measure of what's going through the foot. And in this case here, due to the double loading of that foot, uh, only a small percentage of the blood flow that's going to the foot is actually getting through the foot. It doesn't go through the foot because the resistance is so great inside the foot. All of a sudden the foot is, instead of having uh, for a thousand pound horse, 300 pounds on one foot, you now have 600 pounds on one foot, so you've doubled the load. Now if you take a washcloth, a cotton washcloth, and put between the hoof wall I mean, the, the horse's hoof and the cement walkway, just a washcloth, that blood flow of this perfusing the foot approaches normalcy. It gets to be close to normal, which means the tactile, the touch receptors that are in the foot are perceiving that cotton cloth, and it opens up a lot of these vascular channels. In human research, what they've been doing is to psychophysiology, they're finding that this sort of stimulation from a hard surface to a comfortable surface, we call it comfortable. And that what it's doing physiologically is actually increasing the perfusion of the foot. It's relaxing. It's relaxing. And this is what the horse do, does when it's on a, a more conformable surface than a hard walkway. The horse relaxes both in the horse's foot, which increases the blood flow, but they may even do that psychologically. You need something that's firm. Um, small gravel, pea rock, larger gravels, so the horses will ha have access to that a certain percentage of the day when they want to, as opposed to pasture is probably not sufficient because there's been experiments in other species when they're on uh, the, these uh, harder surfaces. The bone density increases in the foot and the, the, the digital cushion becomes more fiber cartilaginous when they're on these harder pea rock gravel as opposed to pasture. I don't know if there's an exact distance, but they usually walk between where the water is and the food source is, and it depends on the distance between the two. They can be walked, you know, many, many kilometers, tens up to a hundred maybe kilometers, or they can walk, they've shown that's a herd in Western Canada, they average like a half a kilometer per day. But they, they walk according to uh, where the food source is and that sort of stuff. But for ap optimal hoof health, I really think by having the hoof wall bearing a small percentage of the weight, and I say up to between 5 and 20 percent, and have most of the weight on the solar structures, frog bars and sole, uh, you're in the running for the beginning of a, of a decent foot. So it's not the distance traveled? No, I don't think it's the actual distance traveled. It's, it's, it's what the ground on the, if, you know, the ground contact, surface, degrees of hardness, and that sort of stuff, that's important. Components of the whole formula.